We've got the latest from stranded drivers and a pair of Peak One slides. Phil Lindemann, Crystal. 93 News. It's already known as the Summit Snowpocalypse. Up to six feet have fallen in the past week, including two feet in less than 24 hours at Breckenridge. Snow closed Arapahoe Basin for the day and delayed opening at Copper Mountain. It also canceled class for Summit School District and Colorado Mountain College. A busy day for plows started at 1.30 a.m. when a natural slide released on Vail Pass at mile marker 186. Tracy Chulove with CDOT. This might be kind of ironic, but that slide did catch a tow truck in it. So he did have to be pulled out with a tow truck, but no one was injured this morning. CDOT closed the pass and set off two other slides in that area, known as the Narrows, releasing 15 feet of snow onto westbound lanes. Vail Pass remains closed. It should reopen by early evening, nearly 24 hours later. For most, the big story of the day is I-70. CDOT sent this warning around 10 a.m. Avoid traveling the I-70 mountain corridor due to avalanche work and clean up. Stranded in Dillon this afternoon were Ellen and family from Larkspur waiting for the tunnels to reopen after avalanche mitigation. Our son wanted to do some snowboarding and my husband and I were relaxing and now we're stuck because I-70 is closed. But how was the snowboarding? Great, some powder, best. At the Best Western in Dillon, the vacancy sign was on, but the front desk clerk expects to get slammed this weekend with Powderhounds gambling on I-70. Killing time with lunch at Arapahoe Cafe were Chris and Terry. He's recording with his band, Dirty Snowman Society, and got thwarted en route to Denver. Our rock band has got to finish off our first three singles. We're headed to a studio in Denver. We were snowed out by the avalanches on Tuesday, and we got to get the blank and record done. <laughs> at 12.40 p.m., the two asked for doggy bags. CDOT and Announced on Twitter, the tunnels were opening briefly. Love Copper Mountain, but yes, absolutely getting out of here. Portions of I-70 remain closed. Stay tuned for the latest. Peak 1 is shedding today, releasing two natural slides in 12 hours. The first ran overnight from the summit, tearing a path nearly 1,500 vertical feet on the northeastern face. At 1 p.m., another slide released on Mount Royal in a chute known as Dirty Books. No one was caught or injured in any of those slides, but they illustrate how avalanche danger has changed in 24 hours. Mike from Frisco and Alex from Denver were on Mount Victoria yesterday, skiing a pair of trees just north of the new Peak 1 slide path. Oh man, winter's been spectacular. It's like it's been a pow day since October and uh, just been enjoying every minute of it. Avalanche danger went from considerable yesterday to extreme today. Forecasters do not recommend backcountry travel until conditions settle. Outside Copper, the third natural slide in less than a week racked the 10 Mile Canyon, aka Avalanche Alley, above the Conoco Station. That ruptured a gas line early today, closing Highway 91 and disrupting power. 2,000 homes have lost power as XL crews scrambled to fix about 60 separate outages from Silverthorne to Blue River and south to Leadville and Fairplay. Power is almost fully restored, with issues remaining along Highway 9 into Breck. Tonight in Silverthorne is the local premiere of The Quiet Force, a documentary following immigrant workers in mountain towns like Mammoth and Vale. Karen McCarthy with screening partner Elevation Law of Dillon. We have a really diverse group of immigrants. So we have everybody from J-1 visa holders who teach ski lessons to some immigrants who have been living here, you know, their whole lives. Tonight's screening features a panel with the directors based in Jackson Hole and local dreamers, immigrants who came to the U.S as children and now pursue citizenship. Even if you're not super involved in political activism or fighting for immigrants' rights or human rights, it's just a pretty cool film. Doors open at 5.30 at the Silverthorne Pavilion. The film screens at 6.30, followed by the panel, with free food and a cash bar. Cost is $5 to benefit local immigrant nonprofits. A second screening is tomorrow at CMC in Breck. In sports, the Avalanche played the Stars tonight. Game time is 6.30. And in local sports, brought to you by Deep Water Mountain, Inc., spring sports season at Summit High gets started tomorrow with boys lacrosse at Green Mountain. Tigers baseball plays Saturday in Canyon City. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.